How are you? I'm really great. I'm very excited to be here. Oh, are you kidding me? We're so excited to no, have you. I'm going to give you a little public. I told you before, but my driver coming here, Tom, just says, oh, he's the best in the country. Go away. Yeah, I like to compliment people at the front just so to get rid of any of the nasty questions. What you're, <laughs> what you, what you're not saying there is I was also your driver here. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> well, you're Different Tom. <laughs> what you're not saying there is he drove me here yeah, and then exactly. he, came, he took off his mustache <laughs> and came in. Congratulations on the film. Thank you, man. Thank you. When you first read the script, it's a lot. So what, what do you connect with when you first read it? I certainly connect it as a parent. The impotent feeling you have of worry, almost constant worry and fear, and, and it, both parents are like, what the hell are we doing? Or what do we do in these situations? Particularly when things are getting tough. I certainly connected to that first. And yeah. I think what I love about the film about halfway through, there's a great scene I have with Anthony Hopkins, who plays my father, mm. not the same role, by the way, as in The Father, mm. but um, is you realise we're all still sons and daughters and children of parents, and we carry that with us all our life, and that informs our parenting. So for better or worse, you know, most parents, I'm not sure if you're a parent, Tom, but I'm not, no. you start that journey determined not to make the same mistakes that impacted you growing up or the things you thought were not great. I, I'm going to be different. Yeah. I'm going to do this better. I'm going to do that better. Yeah. And I think one of the beautiful things about the story is we actually, in some ways, unconsciously or consciously, we tend to somehow relive a lot of those and bring all those up. So I certainly felt it was as a parent first and then I think just as a human being, I felt there was something very... Um, urgent about the story, a conversation that needs to happen that is so hard to have because there's a lot of guilt and shame and around it and ignorance. And what I loved is the script doesn't give answers as to why or how to solve it. It just really is opening up a conversation. Do you feel it? So you, you feel it as a parent, you connect with it as a parent and you connect with it as a human being. Mm -hmm. Do you connect with it as a child? Yeah. It brought up a lot for me, shooting the film really? and of my own childhood, things that I had forgotten about or wanted to forget about. Um, and my my father died during the filming, so it was, there was a lot of stuff going on uh, for I'm me so personally. Thank you. Um, and it was I, – I, I think if I could describe myself as an actor, I would be generally someone – I, I did a lot of training and part of that training was knowing how to balance the work and home life and how to leave your job at work and not carry characters or emotional turmoil at home. And I, I wasn't very successful with this one. I was pretty much a hot mess during this one. I mean, what are you going to do, right? You know, like I think any man, that's the thing when you watch this film and you like you, with you, you have someone in your life who is, suffers or deals with depression and who doesn't. Or you have right. something in your life who has... It's true. We all do, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have, you, you have someone in your life, whether it's you or somebody else, who is a child of divorce mm -hmm. and who isn't. Right. Or like who doesn't have someone in their life. <laughs> yeah. It's hard enough to... And when I say hard enough, it's moving enough to watch it. Mm. But to... And I know... And, we, and we, don't you tell me anything you don't want to tell me. But I know these things have come up in your life. I've read interviews you talk about your, yeah. your, your family like growing up. When, even in the Wolverine stuff I heard you talk right. about. Where the anger... Right? Where the anger right. came from in Wolverine. Yeah. For that to come out in this movie, I can't imagine. I can imagine that's that's hard, Hugh. Yeah, but it's also beautiful. Yeah, I think you know I'm 53, so I I'm at a point in my life where I'm really interested in the patterns that I unconsciously live. I don't want to keep living them or repeating them, not unconsciously. Um, so I'm probably like most people on a search for for all of that stuff that's within me. And and acting gives you the most incredible opportunity to face it, but it's hard. It is hard. And I, I'm i super grateful for it, but I'm not going to lie to you. There was times where I was struggling to sleep. There was times where I probably hugged my kids and they were like, what the hell is going on with dad? <laughs> like it's, I was feeling a real need to connect. Um, and it has certainly changed me, I think, as a parent for sure. Changed it, huh? Oh, I'm different parenting now. Really? Oh, yeah. I think I admit a lot more, for example, uh, things that I thought you're never meant to admit to as a parent. Like uh, I'll say to one of my kids, like, 
I got to be honest. I ha- actually, Mum and I disagree on this, and I have no idea who's right or wrong. I just have this weird feeling that that this is not going to end well. And can we sit down and talk about it? Now that though that sentence would never have come out of my mouth, we would have had Deb and I would have had to talk about it. Would somehow wrestle our way to it. This is what we think, and we sit them down now. This is happening, and we think it should be this. Um, and I somehow thought that was parenting, or I didn't think it was right. I mean, my kids are 17 and 22, right. so just to give context. I didn't think it was right to share vulnerability, too much vulnerability. I thought that would end up being a burden for them. Yeah. Oh, and a burden for them. Interesting. Yeah, of that, course. Yeah. Well, they don't want to feel unsafe, like, oh, my God, my dad's out of control. But, take on dad stuff. I understand. That. But now I will. Like, I'll, I'll say, like, hey, guys, I know I might seem a bit preoccupied or – if I seem a bit vacant, I'm just really nervous. I've got my opening night next week and this is bothering me, that's bothering me and I'm worried about how it'll go. And so, and I see their relief uh, when I say that kind of thing. Um, and it connects us. So there, there's a couple of changes. That's beautiful. You know, I don't know. I'm, I'm ready to get letters from parenting experts going, what the hell are you thinking? No, like, no, I don't no. Know, but no. it certainly, yeah. I feel, yeah. part of the conversation has to be leading with vulnerability, even if you're the parent. Yeah. You're supposed to know, supposedly knows. And that, you know, I think there's a line in the movie, love is not enough. It's not always enough. Yeah. Love is the most important thing, mm-hmm. but that doesn't solve problems. It doesn't always tell you how to handle a situation yeah. just because you like, and, and it can get in the way. Yeah. It can make you blind to certain things. Yeah. It can make you feel like I'm the one who's got to fix this. I'm the one who loves this kid more than anyone. Mm-hmm. But maybe someone who's a little more removed or a little more experienced or who's seen it for 40 years is a better person. That's that's that's, that's hard, man. That's hard. Mm-hmm. But, but it's good. I mean, I think leading with vulnerability is always the way to go. You know, I think the more we can be true of ourselves to one another is, is right. even if there's a problem, at least it's going to be an honest problem. Right. You know what I mean? I don't know about you. I mean, I guess Newfoundland's a bit like... Australia. That's yeah. not the way we were brought not up. Our, not our parents' generation, I'll tell you that much. Right. No, you keep it in Ooh, yeah. and you do a bit of this. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I started seeing a therapist about a year and a half ago. Yeah? How's that? Awesome. I, I've seen one too. It's great. Oh. Yeah. I'm like, the driver, the hell? his name's Tom. No, I'm joking. No, I'm only joking. I'm joking. You well, I was seat? crying in the back seat about an hour ago. I didn't know he was a professional. <laughs> there, there you go. Um, it's awesome. Yeah? But, but growing, like... I know five, ten years ago, if I said that to my mates from high school, they're like, oh, she, she's been in Hollywood too long. Yeah. You, know, you know, what's wrong? You just got to you know, have a couple of beers with your mates and you talk about it and move on. I'm yeah. like, actually, I'm not sure my, a lot of my mates would really have a lot to offer. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe they would. But um, there is certainly a place for having a real friend that you can really share everything with. And I was, certainly for me, there's a place to having a professional who knows what they're talking about oh, it's the best it's the greatest you know right and how funny. long have you been oh seeing? uh what am i 35 so yeah. since i was 28 really yeah yeah had a had a panic attack sent me to the hospital came out st- had to go see a therapist right changed my life i wouldn't be here if it wasn't for that and like you i'm a big mindfulness person right you do a lot of that stuff too right yeah i've been meditating for 25 years yeah um that certainly changed my life in a big way you got a daily practice yeah twice a day what, uh, how long? TM, 20 minutes. TM? Yeah. All right. What's your mantra? I'm on joking. <laughs> <laughs> That's like the best question I've ever had. I could have just slipped it out and been expelled. <laughs> yeah, you'll be out. Been expelled from the Maharishi School of Meditation. Damn. For people who don't know, you're not meant to say it out loud. Yeah, it's a transcendental meditation. <laughs> you're not, you're not, you are given a mantra and you're not to say it out. You're not to say it out loud. But I, I almost got you. You almost got I me. I almost got you. That's my hard hitting gotcha journalism. <laughs> I get celebrities to tell me their mantra. That's it. Do you, and then I can never meditate again. Well, does, does, this, ruin. does this help you in your acting career too? For sure. Yeah? I, I actually went to a, a – it was a school of practical philosophy. I was in Perth. There was a guy in my school who was in my year who had a quality about him. I couldn't put my finger on it. I said, there's something different about you, man. And he said, oh, you know, I meditate. And I said, oh, what's that? And anyway, so I went along to this thing. And, and that very first day they gave us – a beginner to meditation, which was a kind of mindfulness practice of connecting to your senses twice a day for two minutes. So just sit, feel your body in the chair, feel the breeze on your face, all of that. Two minutes. So I literally went to acting school the next day, my first class with this guru acting teacher. And he said, I'm going to tell you something to do. I'm going to give you an exercise and I'm going to tell you right now, 99% of you will never do it. You'll do it for about a week and then you'll never do it again. 
So we're all eager and we're listening. He goes, twice a day I want you to sit down and just connect to your senses because the only thing that matters as an actor is being in the present and the only way you can do that is through the senses. If you start thinking, you're already out. So he get, and I'm like looking at my buddy who'd taken me to this class. I'm like, this is the thing we got last night. So in my head, I was like, oh, this, this thing's going to really help my acting. Yeah. So, so that's why I sort of got into it. And about eight months into meditation, I was like, oh, oh, this is, oh, acting's not the, the center of it all. <laughs> being yourself and being at home with yourself, that's it. Acting is another activity or being a parent or being a friend or whatever it is. That, that dawned on me about a year later. Well, does it give you that impermanence that you're looking for? Because that, that's because mm. I think one thing that mindfulness and meditation can do is it can give you the sense of the, a comfort and impermanence that nothing that that uh, life uh, does not necessarily have any meaning, uh, and that's kind of okay. Uh, maybe that's not even what I want to say. The 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 path that you think you may have yourself, or I need to do this and this and this and this, is right. is one that is created. And I am of the right. mindset that the only path that we have for one another is to love one another, and because our life is fleeting and impermanent. We should try to create kindness and love for one another. Right? That just became a meme. What you just said, by the way, it's now a meme. Am I am I going to be a meme? That's like a meme. Keyboard cat. It literally, <laughs> that was perfectly said. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's hard to take in the feeling. I think if someone is listening for me is. The feeling of it is being yourself, completely yourself at home, not burdened by the got to, got to mind. I got to do this. I should be doing that. I got to be doing this. I got to be done. This is who I should. That seems to run all the time. And with meditation, I feel it just go away and I just can be myself. Because I think you're very confusing to a lot of people because your, 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 your choice is artistically you. <laughs> right. Well, you know. No, they confuse you're, me sometimes. You're, you're, you're Wolverine, like a right. Marvel star, right. right? Like big old action star. I got a question about that afterwards, okay. by the way. You're in a heartbreaking drama about a child suffering from depression and a parent dealing with guilt. You're in one-man shows. You're in, you're like a musical theater dude. You're like a big musical theater dude. Right. Uh, hey, That's the most confusing to me. Is that so? Oh yeah, my first job I was in Beauty and the Beast on stage. They made me have singing lessons every. I never sung in my life before. How did what, what, how did you end up? My being? agent just said, "Oh, they look, they can't find someone to play guest on." And I said, "Well, I'm not a singer." And they said, "Yeah, but they really they've looked everywhere. Like, just go for it." Didn't you do it in Australia? Didn't yeah, you do? Yeah, and this yeah. was it. And oh, they yeah? finally, the, I jumped through a lot of hoops. And I remember luckily reading first for the part, and I could see them all going. Oh. I could see them go. Oh, and then I sang, and I can see them collectively go. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and then finally this was the Australians they said the Americans are coming out in a month get some singing lessons dude oh, yeah? so I got some singing lessons and the Americans went <gasps> but the Australian guy who was there a month ago goes no this is so much better than a month ago <laughs> you don't know what you saw a month ago like we don't start for three months like if he can improve like that and so they took a bet on me And but in my contract is it must have singing lesson every week oh go away they paid for me go I'm on. a lead in a musical to have singing lessons so the most surprising left turn of my career has been musicals, and I, I love them. Yeah, the the the, the so the musicals, <laughs> the, the sad films, yes. the one man shows, the I mean performing music, the action star stuff. I mean, it makes sense. I was going to ask you this question about like, is there, what's your relationship with risk in your career? Oh, yeah, that's a good question. Are, well, you know, we'll go ahead then. Say yes. Yeah. Well, like absolutely. For me, I always had in my head, keep as many doors open. I knew that's what I loved from when I trained as an actor. I loved, you know, when you train, you do fencing and then you do a scene like a Shakespeare class and then you'll have singing once a week. And fencing it, like with swords? Yeah. Uh -huh. It's all this old schools acting. It's all about fight combat, but also how to use your body, yeah. voice lessons, movement lessons, circus skills. Like you would do literally everything and then you're doing a, a mammoth play and then you're doing a comedy. And I thrived on that. So I knew... If I could have my choice, the more variety, the better. And so I tried to keep as many doors open as I could. And there was a little period in there with X-Men where I could see, <laughs> I was around X-Men 2, 3, I was like, mm, the scripts that are coming in for me are, are very much like that. And that was it, action-y sort of reluctant hero sort of roles. And so I just constantly looked for other things, whether it be in the theatre or or whatever. To Why? Keep to, 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 to nourish your soul? Is that the reason? or? I've always, I was a very scared, this is a great question, Tom. I was a very scared kid, hated feeling scared, hated that feeling of that I was going to be trapped because my fear would be too great. So I would always push through. And my experience has been 
including this role, by the way. I don't think I've ever been as scared to take on a role as this, but the more scared I am, the more courage I find uh, and the more rewarding the whole thing becomes, whether it's a success or not. So my relationship with the risk is uncomfortable. I've had to spend many years getting comfortable with that and then realizing that if I'm too comfortable, I'm probably doing pretty average stuff. That's a powerful thing to figure out for yourself. Yeah, it sucks. I wish I – sometimes I like, oh, it's so nice just to be a bit more, more comfortable. I mean, people assume – I know people say to me all the time, like, you did nine movies as Wolverine. It must have been a walk in the park. I'm like, no, no. Every time I put on those claws, like, you only have to know me for three seconds, and I'm very different from that character. And it, and it always felt hard to me. I heard a story about you with the Wolverine thing that I found very interesting, that um, you had come from the theater and that the theater is an ensemble. Right. And then when Wolverine happens, you are the soul. You are the, the, the S-O-L-E. Like you are the, the, right. the only. You are the number one on the call sheet is what mm -hmm. they call it, right? Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden people are coming to you with questions. And all of a sudden you are having to represent this franchise. Mm -hmm. And it's not um, an ensemble anymore. Mm -hmm. And I heard you say that. And now this makes sense because I heard you say that it was very lonely to do mm -hmm. that. But now I understand it must have also been pretty scary to do that. Scary. Yeah. And I, I spent a lot of time trying to break down any feeling on set of, hey, I'm Wolverine, back it up, don't talk to me. I'm I, say that, I say that every day. <laughs> People don't know that. How does it work? Yeah, I say, hi, I'm Wolverine. And they go, you're obviously not. <laughs> <laughs> I feel uncomfortable in that position. But oh, yeah? I also, I think over time grew into that, that it's okay. It's all right to be number one on the call sheet. It's okay. And rather than shy away from it, use it to set a tone on the set. And, and I, for, me, for me, the tone is I want everyone to feel appreciated and valued for their work. Um, and I think that's where the best results come from and the most rewarding feeling for everybody is. Um, and, but, but I had to come to terms with that feeling of this could be a bit lonely and that's why I love going back to the theater. I mean, this, I, this, it, this, this film is, is, I mean, it's originally a, a play. Yeah. But it, the, 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 if you don't mind me saying so, I don't know if this is an insult, the film very much reads still as a play to me. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's not very often and it's so beautiful to get a six-page scene. I had a six-page scene with Anthony Hopkins, six-page scene with Young Zen, where are two or three of them, and with Laura Dern in that restaurant, and it's beautiful because normally in film it's like a couple of minutes, but because it was crafted from a play, there are these beautiful scenes, and I think actually it's, it's so great on film to watch two characters and really be able to sink into it. Um, but yeah, I think if you know anything about film or plays, you can see where it's come from. I mean, I, I do think Florian, in both The Father and this, both were plays originally, has found a way to make the cinematic language yeah. perfect for it. And Yeah. There is something about watching you and Laura in those scenes and watching how you lean on each other in a way that feels so authentic to the way to divorced parents would have to try to find a way to come together, but also in the way that theatrical actors would have to find a way to bond. You know, in, right. in a hard scene too. You know, yeah. We it's funny. It did have that feeling of a play. How we were, and it was part to do with COVID. Yeah. So we weren't. No one was going out. We were all at a hotel. So we were in a bubble together, mm -hmm. and we all were hanging out together and relying on each other. Um, my wife was there with me and my kids, and Laura was on her own at the time coming in. So she sort of became part of our family, and you can feel, even though I just met her, I I felt with Laura, and this is more luck than anything, I guess. I felt that uh, like we'd known each other for 20 years. And that you can feel that in the scenes. Yeah, there's a, there's a selflessness in, in, this, uh, in this film from you, and I, I can see it now, you know, a, a gift to people, and I can see that through the, the mindfulness. I'm so glad you said it, because I was going to say it, and it would feel a bit weird if I said <laughs> that, that, this I, was, is a that gift. I was a gift. It was a gift. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? You can say it. Right after, you tell me what, <laughs> right after you tell me what your mantra is, we're, uh, we're, we're laughing. <laughs> um, uh, just a, a really, really beautiful performance. And I, 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 I think there's so much conversation around this thing about, oh, my God, is he going to get the Oscar nominee? Is he going to win the Oscar, the O for the EGOT and all that stuff? But like, <laughs> if there's one thing I can tell from talking to you is that there's something, something much more deeper in the offering that you give to people creatively. It's a beautiful. Thank you. Thanks for coming in. Thank you, Tom. My pleasure. Yeah, it's lovely.